So this will be a talk about architecture. Uh, architecture is probably the only art that you cannot escape. You can stop listening to music, you can stop going to museums, but you can never get away from architecture. It's all around us and it impacts our mood, sometimes knowingly, sometimes unknowingly. Um, for example, when you go to a building that you like more, you always are more excited than the other way around. Architecture, for me, it's everything that you cannot touch. It creates space out of space. Everything that you can touch on a building is material. But those materials give us restrictions and give us opportunities. Together with the evolution of the modern technology and with the evolution of materials, nowadays the architecture evolves as well. And together with that evolution, we are able to create more contemporary forms. We are less restricted than we were in the past. It's a bit unusual nowadays to create, for example, an ancient column with steel structure. People create architecture, architecture creates cities. If people are the soul of the city, then architecture is the body of the city. Architecture, architecture has strong links with the people and what they need, with the technology, with the politics, with the economy, with time and space. If we have to put that in one sentence, I will use, I will use the saying by the famous architect, Miss van der Rohe, which says architecture is the will of an epoch translated into space. However, this connection sometimes can be lost, and we, the architects, need to be very careful about that. This will be a story about London and Skopje in the 60s and 70s, and London and Skopje today. London, probably you all know, but Skopje is not that widely known. Skopje is the capital of the Republic of Macedonia, and it's my hometown. And Macedonia, 24 years ago, used to be part of socialist Yugoslavia, and today is an independent country on the Balkan Peninsula. But let's start first with London. London in the 60s and 70s had about 8 million people. The economy was not doing its best, and uh, a lot of jobs were lost in the city, and also the London Tourist Info Board was opened in 1963, which is probably not the most important event that year, but it's a very important year for Skopje. In the 60s and 70s, all around the world, the modern architecture was trending, and most of the building built in every city in the world was in that style. I will just scroll quickly through a few buildings of London that I think are a great example of this architecture. So the center point building with a very unique concrete facade. The Balfour and Terelic Tower, a very interesting example of brutalist residential architecture. Barbican Center, it's one of my favorite spaces in London and a very good example of brutalist modern architecture that still lives and it's still popular today. And the National Theatre with its bold forms and very interesting uh, concept. It's a very unique building for, uh, for a National Theatre. All the buildings that you saw were built in, in, do, in that style, in the modern architecture. And now we'll go to Skopje in the 60s and 70s. At that time, Skopje was a much smaller city. It had 200,000 people. It was the capital of Macedonia and that, at that time part of Yugoslavia. And in 1963, one of the biggest natural disasters happened in Skopje, and that was a strong earthquake which destroyed almost 80% of the city, leaving a lot of people homeless and a lot of people killed. Skopje, before the earthquake, was quite a small town, but with a, with a very beautiful public square. Those are the buildings that created the identity of the city. And as you can see, the National, um, the national Theater, the House of the Army, the National Bank, and all those buildings were in the main square, and they created the cityscape of Skopje. In 1963, these buildings were destroyed during the strong earthquake, and the city actually lost it, its identity. So although we lost a lot, we lost the identity, and we lost a lot of beautiful buildings, not to mention the, the loss of people, but we also gained a lot. We gained a new master plan done by Kenzo Tange, who was one of the most popular architects of that time and one of the most popular figures of the modern architecture. Kenzo Tange created new symbols in the city, but without destroying the, the historic ones. He created new layout of the city, which, which was done in the, in the modern, brutalist manner, and also with a very modern urban planning. Um, normally, everything is laid on the Balkans, but this time, Skopje jumped many years ahead and earned its place on the map of, on the architectural map of the world because we started building buildings that were trending in the whole world. 
Sadly, not completely the master plan by Kenzo Tange was developed. So today we can only see the city wall, which goes like a half ring around the city center, and also the railway station, which was designed by Kenzo Tange. But not only the master plan, at that time, also a lot of other modern buildings were built in the city. And I will show you some of them, which for me have great quality. This is the student dormitory Goza Delchev. And for me, these years in Skopje are the golden years of the architecture. Telecommunication center with very interesting forms. The post office in Skopje, a very interesting, brutally circular building. Macedonian Academy of Art and Science. And the National Theater, which is my favorite building in Skopje, that even today, 40 years later, it still looks like it was built now. It doesn't look that old. All those buildings may have been similar with the buildings that you saw in London, but then the transition happened. And the first probably 15 years when Macedonia got independence, it was quite quiet years for the, for the Macedonian architecture. Not many new buildings were built. There was no big investment in architecture. And also most of the buildings that were built were residential buildings without big architectural quality. One of the first buildings that sparked a lot of attention in the city is the Mother Teresa Memorial House built in 2007. If you didn't know, Mother Teresa was born in Skopje, and when she died, there was a competition for a memorial house for her. This building at that time was not much loved by the architects, but it was built. <laughs> Later on, in 2009, there was an announcement for a new building on the main square, which was a church. It was supposed to take a huge portion of our public space, and I was a student at that time, and together with some of my fellow uh, students of architecture and young architects, we created First Archie Brigade, which was an informal group that organized a protest against this building, and we named the protest First Architectural Uprising, and our idea was to make a square of people on the site where the church was supposed to be built, just to show the people the size and the impact that it would have on the public space. That is us standing on the square, but sadly, some of the media reinterpreted the protest as anti-religion, and then the whole idea was lost. So the year after, in 2010, a new plan for, the, for Skopje was announced. The plan was called Skopje 2014, and you can see the image above Skopje in 2008, and on the image about, uh, uh, below, how Skopje should look by the end of 2014. This plan, the idea of the plan was to completely redevelop the Skopje city center and to make it into neoclassical style, contrasting the, the modern style that we had before, which was built after the earthquake, mostly. So construction started immediately on the river bank and the locations around the city center, around the, the main square in the city center. And on the image above, you can see Skopje now, and on the image below, you can see Skopje in the past. Oh, actually, I got the years right. So the image above shows you Skopje in 2009, and below, you can see Skopje a month ago. Uh, that's the new vision for our city, and that's actually the new identity that we have in the city. A lot of new bridges over the river with many statues. That's the new Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That's the new office for the public prosecutor. The new building of the Macedonian Constitutional Court and Archaeological Museum. And that's actually the old theater that you saw on the photo before the earthquake, which, was, which is the only building that was reconstructed and it was built just a few years ago. But not only new buildings, Part of the project is changing the facades of the modern buildings in the city. So these are two examples. The, the, image, the images above is the Macedonian government, how it looked a year ago and how it looks now. And on the image below is a few residential buildings on the main square with their new neoclassical facade. This is another building that is just being done in, into the same neoclassical Baroque style. Another building that is slowly getting new facade. And this is one of the tallest buildings uh, in the city center on the main square, done in the very popular at that time international modern style, which is slowly becoming probably the tallest Baroque building in the world. <laughs> 
This building in the Skopje City Shopping Center, which I never knew how much a city, a shopping center can actually mean to me and to few, many other people in the city. So this building is completely open. It's actually not a building, but it's installation in space because it has almost 70% public area inside the building. It doesn't have doors. You can walk, you can enter from any side. It, it actually serves like a street connecting two parts of the city and it is used even when the shops are closed. This building, sadly, it's also about to get new facade, and not only to get new facade, but to become a proper shopping mall, which will be closed, it will have doors, and you won't be able to enter it when the shops are closed. The Macedonian Architectural Association organized few protests against it, and I was surprised uh, that the shopping mall can mean that much to some people in the city because usually shopping malls are just places where you go to shop, you don't relate that much with the architecture of those buildings. But sadly, even after this protest, I cannot say if the building will stay as it is now. Another aspect of the projects are the monuments. On the map here, you, you can see the, the city center, and all the purple dots that you see um, are actually new monuments, or monuments that are already placed in the city, with the biggest purple dot in the center, is the biggest monument that we have at the moment on the main square, and it's named Warrior on a Horse. I will just quickly show, show you a few other images of the monument, just so you can see the impression. So that's a new fountain, that's a new triumphal arc, and that's a new restaurant in the river. <laughs> During this process of changing the Skopje city center, some of the artists created their collages and images showing their opinion about the project. And these are some of them that I've chosen to show you, just so, so you can see their statement um, about the whole thing. So this is Skopje and London now. Although they have had probably similar buildings in the past, they're quite different cities now. And as I said at the beginning, Architecture has strong links with time and space, but sometimes these links can be lost. And although beauty is a relative thing, and we all have different tastes, we develop our taste in our life but what, by what we are exposed to. So Skopje, that's what we are exposed to now, and that's what we are exposed to in London at the moment. So these cities went in completely two opposite directions. And... Um, Although we can see different things, and although we are exposed to different things in the city, the image of the city to all of us leaves a big footprint in our memory, and that memory we want to keep and we want to evolve. And when that memory is lost, that's when you start feeling like a tourist in your own city. And that's when you realize how much you love your city and how much you want it to evolve and not to start all over again. You want to show your memory to your children, to your grandchildren, and you want them to create their own identity, but with respecting your identity and with respecting what you had in the city when, you, when, when it was your time. You want everyone in the future to create their own time and space and to relate their architecture to their own time and space. As an architect, I always tend to make better buildings, better cities, cities that respect the past, but also aim for the future, and cities that take the knowledge and take only the advantage of the knowledge and the experience of the past, but don't copy it. We should only be inspired by the past. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>